Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. I hope you're having a wonderful Monday evening. Today, we have a very special show. If you missed our show over the summer, we were talking about these, uh, we were talking to these three individuals about being Black in America. And today, they're back, fresh off a brand new president, to talk about how we're going to get on the same page with our new president and start the healing process for Black people. Today's Sherrard Show is brought to you by Shisha Becca. This is the holistic health strategist. She is the one that can cure you and heal you, especially ladies from a lot of the ailments that women have, whether they're young, middle-aged, as well as older. You have to check her out. Her information is on your monitor, holistic health strategist, um, holistic, holistic-remedies.org. Um, this is the confidence builder, and you're doing it all natural. You have to see what she does. She's remarkable. Contact her for a free consultation and let her know the Sherrard Show brought you there. Also, it's, uh, the Sherrard Show is brought to you by eBoat. eBoat, where you can lose weight 20 to 30 pounds in just 90 days. Go to eBoat.tv. All you have to do is take a healthy pill, do a little 20 minutes of walking, and lose 20 to 30 pounds. It's all natural as well. Again, tell them the Sherrard Show sent you and you can get 20% off your first order. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, in this nation, and today, as well as this year, 2020 has been a tumultuous year. Countless Blacks, African Americans have been murdered. Countless ones have been lynched. Countless Sorry. ones have been going through so much um, issues, as well as police brutality, that now it seems that we have a ray of hope. We have a brand new president, Mr. Joe Biden, he is now our official president, and we as Black people feel that that's a chance where we can begin healing uh, from four years of, of, of brutality, racism, white supremacists, and so many things. And we're talking, about three, talking to three gentlemen about ways we can heal, as well as their perspective on having a new president. We do have Tajagina Jones. He is the president of TPP, Totally Positive Productions. He's all about doing big things for the youth. He has rejoined us on the Sherrard Show this evening. How are you doing this evening, sir? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm glad to be here. And gentlemen, that's a part of the colleagues. I'm glad to just be a part of the show today. And glad to have you. Then we have Mr. Cortez Mack. This man is a music, um, he is a producer. He has uh, produced some great films, uh, What About the <clears throat> Children? He is currently working on a film called Love Miles Away. And he does big things in a positive way. He's soft-spoken, but very articulate. And he stopped by the Sherrard Show to offer his opinion again on um, how we're going to heal as a society. Cortez, how are you, sir? I'm doing good. How about yourself, sir? I'm okay. Thanks for asking. And then we have one of the funniest men in Chicago. Um, he is a, a very funny guy, very humble uh, gospel uh, individual, and he's always doing big things and looking to, uh, I like his, I like his question of the day. It's so profound, his question <laughs> to generate so much from individuals. He stopped by the show again. He was on our last episode and he's back now to offer his wisdom and insight. Mr. Corey Bailey, welcome back to the show. How are you, sir? Man, I am doing well, and I hope you guys are enjoying this Smurf light that I'm giving you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Now, Cortez, let's start with you. Now, off the news of seeing who our new president will be starting January 21st, 2020, I'm sorry, January 21st, 2021, what was your initial reaction when you saw he became victorious? Oh, well, it was a good positive thing, you know, uh, because not only was he a sign of uh, unity and, and healing, you know, there was a process of many people, of many cultures already in the process of doing that. And once we all uni unified ourselves um, to become one, to erase what we've experienced for the last four years, man, it's just really, really easy. Because I think um, at the end of the day, you know, most people are going to see, are, go are already coming together. You know, and uh, whether we want to believe it or not, I'm one of them cats um, who've already been on the journey of bringing the men together, the brothers together. Now I'm just going to a whole different plateau of it now. And and what about you, Corey? Now, what was your re initial response when you saw that the votes were already in or, or finally in and we have a new president? One, I was the vice president for uh, Barack Obama. Well, first and foremost, I was... As my late friend, uh, my, late, my late friend's father used to say, I was overpleased. Um, like Cortez had mentioned, 
the rain that was once over us as a country is no longer over us. And just to have that rain no longer being over us is a feeling of, of I'm able to breathe a little bit more. But I will say this, the onus is not on the president in reference to what we need. The onus is on each and every last individual, every one of us to stand up and be accountable and fight for what we need for ourselves and for our children. Cause I'm still worried about my son and thank God uh, Biden is in there and, and the first uh, official black vice president, go ahead girl, do your thing. But we have to be responsible for ourselves. I agree. Now, uh, what about you, Tosh? How was your, what was your initial response when you saw that Joe Biden became our 46th president of the United States? Um, it, it basically, I was just pretty much curious now to see um, what, 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 what it was. And I normally I watch CNN. So when they had revealed it, I was, at least I was glad it was over because it was just seeing those numbers and each day not knowing who was the winner. It was kind of, you know, mind boggling. But once that did it, I stopped paying close attention. And what really got me is when he did the speech because I watched it through CNN. And I saw how humble it was. I didn't even know he had ran three times. So it was a lot of information. And what it was saying is some educational points that they was making is to never give up. And by him being 78 years old, God confirmed to me, any dreams that you may have, don't give up. And then I saw when they he finished the speech, the, the exciting fireworks and the things that they had in the sky, it was over the top. And his reaction was something of humbleness. And I think that, he was the like they were saying that he was the right person for this time, the right person. And then in, in his speech by him using the Bible, he was coming from the East Ecclesiastic chapter three, a time for something. And then he mentioned the demonic forces and the angelic. So his approach seems like it's just right. So the key is is just following through, and and we have to stick with the Bible. Um, that's going to be the key. And if we have a president that can follow the Bible, um, the healing will begin. Now, there was many countries um, that were offering their opinions on <clears throat> what it means to them to have a new president. And most were very overjoyed about having a new president because of all of the damage that Trump had caused globally. The, the relationships he destroyed that most of the presidents have spent years trying to cultivate and trying to ascertain, he wiped out in less than four years. But now, there was an interesting point that was made. Um, when Trump first got elected, and I'll start it with you, Taj, um, it was said that it was meant to directed to Black people. They said that if you don't like who's the president, go ahead and go back to your country. That was what was said four years ago. Now, four years later, now Black people are saying, if you don't like who's been made president, go ahead and leave the country. Now, um, kicking it off to you, Taj, were you 100% dissatisfied with Donald Trump? No, I, to be perfectly honest, I'm gonna let y'all in. I voted for him. I, I didn't have a problem with him because I, like I had said before, um, God is who I work for. God is who, who's gonna take care of me regardless of who the president is. To get caught up, I looked at the simple fact of a business person. To me, to be successful and even get to the plateau of a billionaire over so many years, he had to be doing something right. So the key is, is what, you know, the viruses and things like that. The only thing is, is when he was mentioning a plague, a plague has come from something spiritual in the nature, you know, the plagues, you know, during Moses time and all that, that God allowed to happen. But for him, them to, to blame it on a man, I just think it was wrong, you know, the decisions and stuff, but he, he did his part with what he could do in the time that he is. Yes, I think his behaviors of what he was saying and stuff may not have been, you know, um, on a professional level. But one thing I respected about Donald Trump, if you don't like me, I rather I would respect you if you tell me you don't like me versus laughing in front of my face and stabbing me behind my back. At least with him, he was like a straight shooter. He was gonna tell it like it is up front, and I think that's where the respect factor came. Because what happens is a lot of people say the right things, laugh in your face, and then stab you in the back. Now, but what about you, Corey? Corey? That was good. Now, what about you, Corey? Were you 100% dissatisfied with Donald Trump over the four years? 
I'm a little taken back right now. You guys are gonna have to bear with me for a moment because I'm getting over what the good Reverend just said. First of all, uh, let, me do, Gerard, let me do this. Let, let me do this. Let me go ahead and represent the millions of people that are watching this and listening to this. And they're go, they are they want to say what I'm about to say. So I'm mm-hmm. really representing them right now. I'm their representative. What the hell you mean you voted for Trump? <laughs> Now, let, now, understand, I do understand that everybody has their own opinion. Yes, and this, this, yes. other. But let me say this, you especially being a man of the cloth and morals yes. and morality is biblical. How can you, yes. and now you talk about respecting Trump, I get mm-hmm. that. But at the same time, the man is so disrespectful. The man is blatantly, as you called it, honest. I'm going to say blatantly disrespectful. How could you vote for somebody who has so many negative moralities? as you stand up and represent a God who is about morality. I'll give you a second. Go ahead and respond to that, Taj. I, I love Brother Corey on that. And thank God we have, we entitled to our opinions. That's right. why we can't argue or be upset about it. But no, what no, I'm no. saying is he was straightforward whether you like it or not. Sometimes we could tell the truth. And sometimes it, it, it's, it. But let, let me tell you, Corey, I have a non-for-profit organization and under Donald Trump's administration, I was able to get more grants and stuff. I'm, I'm, that's why I was saying I put it for God because I was blessed. And, he, and it talks about that. Regardless okay. of who's the, the who's the head, he still would bless you. You know what I'm saying? That's why I had okay. to try to say it from a different tone because I've been prospering under Donald Trump's Trump administration. Mm-hmm. I'm saying for me. Yeah, I get it. So, I, that, so that, that's what I'm saying for, for, for me in that. But the key is, is I try not to get caught up with because everybody have faults, right? Exactly. Everybody says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But what I'm saying with him, at least he's gonna he he's gonna tell it like it is. Because you know he's rich, so he don't like the media. The media didn't like him. He would say things because he he, he was into ratings and stuff. That was just the type of person that he was. But I respected him because you know where he stands. Mm-hmm. Versus some Democrats would say things. If you go down the list of what people say in front of the cameras, what they plan to do if they get in office, then when they get in office, they don't do it. Or there's no money. It, it goes on. But at least with him, whether you like it or not, he was saved with what he, he felt. Okay, let me let Cortez respond to that. Cortez, what are your thoughts on um, what Corey said and <clears throat> Todd voting for Donald Trump? Well, you know, you know, folks who voted for him going to say, you know, he was honest. Uh, straightforward. Donald Trump went straightforward because Donald Trump didn't come to the black community and say, what do you have to lose, did he? He said that in front of white people. Uh, every time he made a racial thing, it was always in front of white people. When he talked about the illegals and all these Mexicans, he didn't go into their community. If he was dishonest, he would have said it in front of our face. Mm. He said it in the place that made him comfortable. And because he said it in a place that he was comfortable, doesn't mean he was honest, and straightforward. Listen, if I talk to you and I don't like you, let me be in your face, not in front of a camera around people who gonna cheer because I'm saying something that he was and they already, and he exposed them to become. But let me back up. Ain't no reason to vote for Donald Trump. The reason why he got elected because America was caught up into a reality mentality, reality TV mentality. And that's all we gave him was a political failed reality show. And far as the money, <laughs> and far as the money, listen, here's the thing that happened with the money. The reason why everybody say they got prosperous under Donald Trump, because he came in there along with the Republicans and they took a lot of money and they had to cover up the money on the other end. Why do you think they gave people $1,200 and allowed all these people to get $10,000 from this link? Listen, that's gonna catch up with us in the end for those who took the money. Those going to come out of the federal taxes. So you re- really didn't do anything. That's he really anything. didn't, we didn't prosper. He, he made it look like we prospered. But that's going to catch us in the end. On the right, tax I, side. I, I have a question, Cortez. Hold on, 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 hold on. Because under Trump, they screwed all the tax laws. They screwed all the tax stuff. That Listen, I told my wife, I don't do taxes. But I found myself in some flustered tax situation of something I thought I cleared up. But somehow it came back and I'm like, wait, what? I'm, my job was confused with federal taxes and this dude didn't pay federal taxes? Stop it. 
come on now. Let's be honest with the whole, listen. Honesty was prior to Obama. Bush was good. Clinton was good. Everybody was good because they had integrity. See, we're talking about, everybody won't talk about he was honest, but he had no integrity. And my, everybody who followed him had no integrity because they got a piece of the pie. So that's why everybody said he prospered. But, but let me tell you something. They didn't, they didn't come back with that second relief bill, did they? Right. There was over 500 million people unemployed. Unemployment stopped in the middle of people. There's a, there's a lot of people homeless right now, can't make rent. But this guy's supposed to be the guy's prosperity. Now, Come um, on now. Yeah, Come on now. The, uh, the, yeah, but Cortez, the Democrats would not have sent out 1,200. We're talking about Donald Trump. Trump. The we right, talking right, about Donald Trump. Trump. Democrats would not have done it. Blame now, now hold on, hold on, gentlemen. Hold on, gentlemen. Corey had his hand up. Let's take Corey's hand. No, no, no. Let's go with the playful banter. But Jones, you act like you knew when you voted for Trump that he was going to bless you with all this money that you received. That was a by, by, by product, product of the voting. You Listen, the whole thing I was trying to be surprised about was mm -hmm. to vote for somebody, as Cortez says, yeah, he had no integrity. And as you also mentioned, anybody that followed him thought that he set an example of being ignorant and not having integrity as a role model. And everything that he represented was that same uh, uh, example. So that's why I was just a little taken back because guess what? Donald Trump, the one thing he has been is consistent with who he go. And what we did was we sat back and allowed him to show us who he was and we still said, you can be our president. Not one time. Did that man say or do anything that was going to be beneficial? Not definitely not for us. And the problem that he caused for us was he took his negative, his ignorant, he took all of his examples of what he thinks is right, and he gave it a commercial platform for everybody who shared his belief to jump on the bandwagon. That's why you had white folks walking up to be black folks in stores talking stuff, getting their head smashed in because they thought they was the, they thought we weren't gonna do it. But so that that's the only thing that I'm talking about, what he promoted as a president. If you look at all the other presidents before him, there was a situation where they had integrity. Even if they did, listen, you talked about saying something behind my back versus saying something in front of me. You know what? Everybody does that. Churches do it. Your family does it. Your job does it. So I expect you to follow like everybody else and do it. Because I'm taking, and like Cortez said, if you're going to say it, say it in front of me. He never did that. You know why? Because we going to act, because this is a generation of black young folks that's behind me now. They ain't the Martin Luther Kings no more. We ain't marching no more, bro. These are Malcolm X is holding the gun, looking out the door, talking about if you want this smoke, you going to get this smoke. <laughs> Now, a very going. good, very, very good point, Cortez. All of you all are making some very um, educated assessments on your your opinion mm -hmm. on things. We are talking to three um, scholastic gentlemen. We are talking to Tajagina Jones. He is the president of TPP, Totally Positive Productions. He's also a minister, as well as Cortez Mack, who is um, he is a, a a music film producer, a very articulate individual, um, and always has a great opinion and insight on how he, why he believes things. I never knew he didn't do taxes. We'll talk about that in a second. Self-inflicted. He were self-inflicted, Corey. Self-inflicted. Uh, you do can't self-inflict. Do your own self now. Bring hey, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Okay, hey, preacher, to yourself. preacher, hold on. Let's, let's, finish, let's finish the station identification. Stop. Now remember, we are talking to the comedian okay. businessman, Mr. Corey Bailey, who's also very knowledgeable and wise um, in his assessment. Now let me pose this question to you, um, Taj. Now, you said something very insightful, and I'm, and I'm just going to stay neutral for this and just uh, give you a question <laughs> for the time yeah, to think about, sure. think about for a minute. I'm sorry, Corey? Stay neutral, Sarah. <laughs> Don't pick a side. Why would you do that? Don't mess up your sponsorship. <laughs> now, 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 Taj, let me ask you a question now. Mm -hmm. um, there is a saying that says, when people tell you who they are, you better believe. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Now, Taj, do you think, in your humble opinion, if you, being a man of God, you saw all that um, Trump has done in four years, do you think God would have been approved, would approve him? You think that T Trump was a man that was sent by God to help the people? <clears throat> yes, originally. And I think he would have been successful until the COVID 
hit um, on that. <laughs> the thing about it is, is heaven put, put you. We have we have to please God, and you know one way, and I think um, Cortez mentioned in court, uh, you're gonna pay for <laughs> what you've done. So even though the behavior ways and the ways that you know, some people I've heard, I've, even my mom would say that he's probably had his ways all the time. But you know what? This experience slapped him in his face. He has to accept reality because maybe he, it was just one way. But that's up to God to, to do it. The key is, is he felt probably in his mind the way he ran the country or was running the country was fair. I mean, up until the, the COVID of January, if you looked at the records, and, and I know Corey and Cortez are not beating up on me too much, we have to look at some of the data. You know, if you look at some of the um, job rates among African Americans, I think it did go up. I mean, you have to look at some of the data, everything that he did make progress, but then the COVID came in there and messed things up and messed the inside up. Because if the COVID didn't probably come, it probably would have been a clear victory for Donald Trump based on numbers of what he has done. Because he had, has made some significant progress business sense, so, some angles that he took that was different from the previous, you know, Obama, he went a different way, but you have to give him credit of some of the things he did do for the country. Now, Corey, you, now the minute I asked that question, you started laughing, Corey. So <clears> tell me, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll start with you, Cortez. You started laughing, Cortez, the minute I, I asked that question. Why, why were you laughing? Because uh, it, it, it's a couple of reasons why I laugh, but you know, I find it amazing that, um, and, 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 and we're still talking about, you know, Trump and administration because that's where we at. It's mm -hmm. just, I find it amazing how Trump supporters can find everything wrong with Cortez Mack, Corey Bailey, everybody, but they can't find nothing wrong with Donald Trump. <laughs> and he's been a president for four years. And every time you talk to a Donald Trump supporter, they bring up Obama, Clinton, everybody else, and want to try to find everything good about Donald Trump. And see, I even got to a point where, let me show you how racist the unemployment thing is that they keep spouting. How come they don't never talk, talk about the poor whites that keep voting against their interests? They keep voting for Republicans and that's poor white trash all over this country. And he even gloated and said, I love the poorly educated and they cheered. But we always want to act like presidents, even Democrats, how <clears throat> independents act like the first thing you want to talk about is black unemployment. That's a slave. That's a slave master mentality. We still on the we still on a, a, a slave board when we talk about unemployment. When you start separate us, the unemployed, the Puerto Ricans and stuff, you're still making white people above us because that's all they talk. We don't talk about the poor, the whites who on meth. We don't talk about the, the downtrodden white people. We always go into black unemployment it's every time we want to talk about blacks. That is correct. And if people don't realize, there's more white people on, um, on um, welfare than it has ever been on black people on welfare. Mm -hmm. It has always been. <laughs> always been that way, but it's never talked about. But go ahead. Even in a prison system, we always talk about <laughs> black people. And brown people, well, what about the crazy white folks who make a good percentage? You brought something very interesting up. Let me get Corey's take, and then I'm going to throw something your way. What do you think about oh, that, Corey? What do, you, do you think that Trump was a man sent by God? <clears throat> Let me say this. In my personal experience and in my relationship with God, all I will tell you is things happen that he allows. I'm not going to sit up here and say God sent Donald Trump. No, no, no. But God had to allow the Donald Trump era to occur. Amen. Again, Go ahead. Go ahead. Very again, good. It's just, it's just how we allow mm -hmm. things to happen. You know what I'm saying? Because the Bible, you know, you know, Pastor Jones up there, there's a lot of things. If you see, that's why the Bible says study to show that self approved so you can write it up. Yeah. So what happens is, no, did God send Donald Trump? That's the saying, did God allow my son to get shot? Or did God allow my wife to die? No, you can't say that because he doesn't operate mm -hmm. like that. He's a God that's sovereign in the sense of he, the situation is going to occur and how you deal with it is, is where he wants to know 
where you are at based off of what he showed you to deal. How he showed you to deal with it. That's why the Bible says all things work together. Now, what's funny is somebody on here, I'm not going to state no names, but somebody on here talked about uh, the, the, the money that was given. I was one of the people that received the $10,000 for my business, Ellingston in, in, uh, Entertainment. But I will not lie. I got uh, my business was established in 2013, but I personally did not follow some things that allowed my business to stay where it needed to stay. So guess what? I received my 10,000 and I put it towards a lot of things that I needed to go towards so that my business can be reestablished. And then guess what happened? Two months later, Chase came after me and closed my bank account because I did not have those documentation that I should have had, but that I didn't know I needed. Because guess what? As a, as a business, as a small businessman, guess what these banks are telling me? I need to open up a business account where I'm able to pull in $1,500 a month into my business account. And if I do not, maintain $1,500 a month, I am now at risk of uh, uh, sometimes of penalties. So therefore, I'm a comedian. I don't make $1,500 a month doing comedy. So for me to open Ellington Entertainment uh, a bank uh, uh, account would mean that I would have to take from my regular nine to five to put into this account to establish it to have $1,500 a month. I can't do that. So guess what happened? Chase closed my bank account down. But I had to go to a whole other bank to get my to get my life back in order because I was a part of that. But I was not one of these people that was lying about. Oh uh, yeah, uh, I got a brand new business. I sell goat milk to babies, <laughs> and I, my and, and you know and don't have paperwork. Like you, my stuff is established. It just was defaulted. So so, so um, you're saying now what you're saying, Corey, is that a lot of people have gotten that money and it was basically yeah. fraud. No. Dude, on the low end of Chicago, people on the block were getting that money. For real. Mm -hmm. People were sending links to other people and then taking money from them and kept it going. I know one person, literally, who got who got over $500,000 by sharing a link and getting some off that. Mercy, mercy. Made a you whole racket out of but, it. But, did a whole racket out of it. But, 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 uh, 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 Sherrod, I'm a, I'm a, I just want to piggyback the one thing Corey said. He made so much sense. Remember, God allowed the devil to tempt sure Job. Did. Yeah. He didn't send the He devil got permission from God. Mm -hmm. That's correct. That's correct. There you go. Very good point. Very good point. Now, so God allowed a lot of things to happen. But now, look at this go now. Ahead. And it's very good you all gentlemen say this because, um, you know, we, many people, um, and, and many may disagree, but for, for, for eight years, Obama had no scandals, no sexual assault charges, no, no um, this and this and that. The only thing they can pull up against him was that he wore a gray suit to a meeting instead of a blue and a black one. It was and yellow. Talking, and, and, and yellow. And they were talking about impeaching him on that. How ridiculous. But the thing <laughs> is that what God does oftentimes is if you don't appreciate what's good for you, he's going to give you four years of what's bad. Come on, Reverend. So he can be able to show how good you had it. White people felt that they were hoodwinked for eight years. So they said, never again, it's going to happen. It was, a, it was a, a white man and a white woman running against each other. So they had to pick which one would they, are they ready for. So they said, we want to rather have a white man who's prototypical of what, what, what uh, America stands for, opposed to having a woman. We're not ready for a woman to, um, to be a president, et cetera. That's what they were thinking. And so they got what they paid for. So you could say all you want about Trump, which, you know, he has done some tumultuous things. But you have to look at the people that voted him in. He's only as powerful as the people that voted him in. That's the bottom line to it. This is not a dictatorship where somebody is, um, is just, he was part of a family that just graduated him in. No, but you have to look at this. But let me just say one other thing that's very interesting is that um, I like what Corey said, and I like what you said, uh, Cortez. God allows things. There was many kings in the Bible that were horrible kings. Horrible. There was more horrible kings than there were good ones. But Saul was the first king, but God allowed them to have their first king because they thought, you know, it's better to have a king run in front of us instead of have the almighty be our God. God said, okay, give them what they want. It bothered exactly. Samuel, but God said, no, give them what they want. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. And they got what they wanted. And the worst part about it, Saul was a king for 40 years. Could you imagine 40 years of Trump macaroni? All right. Anyway. All right. Um, so, so, uh, <laughs> Todd, I'm going to... Um, 
throw this question to you now for our station of identification. Again, I'm um, Sherrod's show is brought to you by eBoat, ladies and gentlemen. eBoat, you have to try this if you uh, feel you're a bit overweight or want to tone things up. Go to eBoat.tv. You can lose 20 to 30 pounds in just 90 days. And then also look on your monitor. We also have um, Shasheka Becca. This is the holistic approach for being well without taking massive drugs or things like that. Holistic-remedies.org. Ask for LaShonda Williams and she'll teach you how to be well, ladies, without drugging yourself or taking shots the all natural way. Her contact information is there. Now, Charles, let me ask you a question, um, Preacher. Now, there, and, and this is for all three of you, uh, all three of you. Now, um, in Africa, there are Arabians, the Arabs, they're Arabs. There are uh, white people, Moroccans, and so on and so forth. But if, if a, um, if a Egyptian comes to America and becomes a citizen, he's an Egyptian American, right? Why is it that black people who've never been to Africa are called African Americans? And we are comfortable with that when we were once upon a time called black Americans. Is that something that you would like to see change or are you comfortable being called African American? Taj, I'll throw it to you. You know, they always used to say, what's in the title, what's in the name? It's just the name. And I think we're African descent, right? We're from Africans, right? That came up on the ship to America, right? There's some descendants from that. So I kind of understand what they say, African Americans. I think black Americans is more, I guess, contemporary, I, I, in my opinion, of what it is, it's just in the name. Um, my, me, myself, my mom was Amer uh, uh, is American. My father was African. So I have some African in me, you know, half African and half American because my father was Nigerian. So, you know, I, I have a direct relations to African American, I guess, um, with that name. But I mean, it's, 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 it's almost like, um, how, how would I say the different levels of, I guess, conversation or tones, you may say, Black American may sound better than African American or something like that, but it pretty much means the same, right? But but my question, though, and I'll get you in, Corey, you'll be the next one to answer, is, mm -hmm. but if you're an Egyptian or Moroccan, they call you a Moroccan American, or they'll call you an Egyptian American, yet you're still coming from the same continent of Africa, but if you're south of that, from Ethiopia, Nigeria, Ghana, they call you an African American. I'm just wondering the thoughts on that. Corey, let me get you to chime in on that. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and address it to this to this point. And it's all about how you were raised. And when you edu when you grow up and you educate yourself or you get educated. So when it comes to African American, as as the good Reverend Dr. Jones said, it, <laughs> We, we, we originally, our descendants were African, okay? But do you know how far removed we've been since then? So let me tell you what, what I am. I'm an American, plain and simple. I am an American. Now, if you look at me, if you want to let my color identify my, my I'm, a, I'm a darker American, but I'm an American, bruh. I can say black American if you want to, but when you if you study, and you go back to where the word black and white came from as it was used to separate people. That's what, that's what black and white was about. It was about the separation of people and how we can get them over there. And I, I'm, you ain't going to believe where I saw this from. I was watching the NBA TV and it was a television with Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal. And, uh, they was, and they had, the, uh, I can't think of her name. I want to say her last, I want to say Janice Allen, but she's a white lady who speaks on all of the uh, racial matters and stuff. And she talks about the truth of where racial, where the racial divide derived from. And I got that from her straight up. I'm not black, I'm not white, I'm not brown. I'm not, first of all, I'm rotisserie gold, so, okay? No, <laughs> but I'm an American, bro, I'm an American. I've been American all my life. I ain't never been to Africa. Mm -hmm. I love them, never been there. I'm an American, very bro. Point. Very, very good point. What about you, Cortez? Well, I'm on the educational side of the point. I think, you know, like uh, Corey said, you know, and uh, Brother Taj, man, once you get to a point, you know, we, we all going to come up and say we're Black and all these other things. But I think on the educational level, it's just good to know all these uh, cultural aspects of it because everybody's on different pages. You know, I have a, a cousin who's 
an uncle and a cousin who's really into the African thing when I talk to them, they really talk to me about the history of Africa. They got African uh, masks and those things. But then you go on the block, you know, it's a whole different, I'm black, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a ninja, all that stuff. So right, right. I think sometimes, you know, it's good to be multi in that and, you know, be able to ha be able to uh, conversate you know, when you meet them people on them levels, because everybody ain't gonna want to be considered black. Everybody gonna want to see African descent. You know, I'm, I'm on the page with um, Corey, you know, you just be American. And and that's part of the problem. We just slice all these things and just be Americans. I think we'll be good. Very good point. Now, um, so off to the topic of tonight with our new president, um, and now being um, that he appears to be for Black people. Corey, I'll start with you. How do you feel he can begin in his first term being able to mend the fences with Black people? I mean, we can't sugarcoat what the obvious problem has <clears throat> been, and that's um, the racial divide, the, t the, the tenseness, uh, the whole police brutality thing. So from a presidential standpoint, because you got to understand something, there are things that Obama put in place but didn't go into place until after he left. And for somebody who says that Donald Trump did this and Donald Trump did that, no. And actually, that was something that the Obama administration had already started. And by the time Donald Trump got into office, it had taken hold. However, back to answer your question, um, there's only so many things that Biden can do when it comes to Black folks. And to be honest with you, I'm really not looking for him to do anything really major to help us out as black folks. All he can do is come in there and set, Amen, up some, Corey. set up some laws and things that can try to make the dealings better. But this goes back down to what, I'm sorry, what Malcolm X and Martin Luther King was talking about all together. What we need to do as a people, there's power in unity. If you go back to the, the bus uh, strike on black folks, like we ain't riding the bus no more. It took them a year, but that unity got what they needed done. That's not on a presidential level. That's on the walk out your house and see your neighbor level. That's where it starts. Starts with us. Biden can only come into office and say some good things. And like real talk, did, did Obama really say anything about how I'm going to help the black no. people? No, he said, I'm going to help America. So it's not about what Biden can do for us, because I really don't think there's too much that he can do. He can just, he can definitely not say what Trump said. Okay, mm -hmm. now we're getting somewhere. When mm -hmm. you agitate the situation or encourage it indirectly, that's the rhetoric. When he, when there was, um, there was a story where he said, when he sees, Trump said this, he said when he sees protesters getting beat up, he laughs at it and they need to get roughed up a bit. This is the most powerful man in the world saying this. What kind of message does it give to the ones that are roughing up the uh, protesters? They're saying in their minds, if he signs off on it, it gives him more encouragement to do it. So yeah. what, do you, what do you say, Cortez? Uh, what do you think about um, what Biden can do to perhaps heal the hurt of Black people? Well, the, the first thing he would probably need to do is just sit back and listen. You know, he, I mean, he, he, he doesn't have our experience. The closest may be Kamala and the rest of the black folks on the, uh, in the uh, office. But the best thing he can do is sit back and listen, you know, and, and listen to some real educated people, you know, not no uh, um, rap artist, not no Candace Owens type folks. Listen to some educated people who have some real plans, you know, and, 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 and just find a way to implement them. You know, but once again, it starts at the bottom. You know, it, 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 it block by block. You know, sometimes I remember when I was in one uh, community I lived in, I just got up on the side and just started raking the grass. And people were like, what you doing? It's like, man, we got to start somewhere, just clean up. And it caught on. And it brought the block back to being having their first block party they had like in 10 years. Wow. Wow, that's you see wonderful. what I'm saying? That's and that's how we start because then we start, then our younger generation starts seeing us doing it. Then it so, goes from one block to the next block. Before you know it, we didn't we didn't got together and, and we over barbecuing at uh at a, a Garfield Park, all in unity and love. You see what I'm saying? So it starts with us. If it's if it's gonna be about us, it have to be about us. I figure let that man govern, let him. Let him get the government back together. Let them handle that, and we handle this block. Amen. Very good. What about you, uh, preacher? What do you say? 
Well, I kind of agree with, the, I see where uh, Mr. Corey Bailey was going with it, and he hit a good point. Because remember, Joe Biden was the vice president with Obama. Obama, you know, and I have his work with Obama, a personal one, but I'll share it maybe at a later time. But the thing is, is talk, you can say one thing, and then you see when he said the speech that the Black people had my back, and then I would have yours. That's what he said the night that he, you know, gave the speech, right? You have to watch that. And I remember seeing the debate with the vice presidents, Camille and Pence, and Pence pointed out something that got Camille, um, Ms. Harris, really mad and upset because he was saying, well, when you were circuit, I think circuit, she was in one of those things. A lot of African-Americans, I think black men too, were getting arrested for petty ones under her leadership. When he brought that out and I watched it, it she got she got real hysterical and told the uh, moderator, uh, he's attacking my character and wanted to, to explain herself. And that made me open my eyes and watch because they it, behind the scenes, if I don't like you, for example, right? I may not come right out like I said before, Donald Trump would come right out and probably say it, but what would happen is I'm going to put somebody else to say no for me. You follow what I'm saying? So we have to watch Joe Biden because, like I say, he was in the administration with Obama that didn't really help us. So now he's talking about helping. We have to just be mindful and watch and see. But the thing is, is if we had stick with the Bible and, and if he could do some of the things, just like Corey said, it start, it's going to start with us. Just like that, that, um, um, that song by Public Enemy, brother's going to work it out. And I think I said it last time. They're going to have to play that song because it's going to be the brothers that's going to work it out. We're going to have to work it out. But it, action speaks louder than words. Like I say, I've seen too many people get in front of the camera, say the right things. But when they get in office, watch what they say. It ain't no money for this. Oh, this is happening. And this is what, that's what we have to watch out for if they can do it. But it's going to take us. Because remember, we're men and women of God. And it says, if God be for us, who could be against us? No matter who's in leadership, and we can't live in ourselves. Yes, we have a new president, but you have some people that, you know, like when I was reading CNN and CNN, they were saying that some people love Donald Trump. They love everything he said or he do. That's why I noticed how they brought that along, because his words was powerful to ignite something. So with Joe Biden, the key is, is Let's just watch and monitor and see if he can help us because he was in the position to help and didn't do too much. Now he has the the whole ball game. It's going to really see if he can do it because I, I I don't know. Let me ask you a question. Uh, your ways, I don't think you can can can, can do it. Let me ask you a question, Taj, um, and then I want to interject something. I'll give this to you and Cortez, mm -hmm. and Cortez as well. Taj, do you believe that um, Donald Trump liked black people? Do we, need, do, we need, do we need a commercial break? I'm sorry, I forgot what you <laughs> no, it just, what just the way you had said, do we, because I'm quite sure he likes all people. You think what so? Happened? What happened? He would well, say it again. Say it again. I dare you say it again. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you say what you just said again. Well, wait a minute. Oh, I think he even said out of his own mouth that he, he did like black people. He did say that, I think. He did say, mm -hmm. he, he said that he loved all people. He said he Can liked black do? people and said, yeah, I think he love all people. So no, um, it's, it's no, and that's a good point because I, 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 over the years, I did send some proposals to his foundations that he never did fund me. But the thing is, is I think he liked all, all people. Okay, all right. Um, let me hear what you have to say about that, Corey. Hey, what the hell need to be said? We know he lying. No, he don't like black people. He, as you said, he said it. He don't like black people. Hey, he, you know he don't like nobody that's Hispanic because he's trying to build a wall to keep them out. But he said it. No, you're right, Corey. But he said that. What did he say bad about the black race? Now, that, that's a good point. He was more on Hispanics about trying to keep them out. And what did he say about blacks? <laughs> what did he say on that magnitude like he did with Hispanics? He didn't do that with blacks. Help me understand. I don't think he did. Let me ask he, per Cortez, he personally he personally insulted Maxine Waters, LeBron James. We can go down the list. As whole countries. Come on, bro. 
wait, 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 wait. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I understand you asked the question, but I kind of want to go back to some of you because you keep bringing up the fairies of Obama and Obama didn't do nothing. Well, Trump, Trump didn't do or created any new executive orders. Everything he did was reversing Obama. A hundred, over 150 things that Obama you can't did. Name, he reversed he all of them. Correct. You can't name one executive order that Trump did on his own. Everything he done was a reversal of Obama. So for black people to constantly say Obama didn't do nothing mm -hmm. is the greatest insult to black people. Hey, absolutely. Obama and, and, could not come out. Obama could not come out and say what he wanted to say. We had to get the codes. When you black, good. you understand the codes. Oh, Cortez, yes, why right. not? Why? Why not? You why? If you're black and you're, I'm gonna tell you why. Why? I'm why he why. couldn't do that? Why? I'm why? gonna tell you why. The reason why, because Obama would have got shot. Oh, come they on. killed, they come killed on. Malcolm X. They killed Martin Luther King. If a Hispanic King, would have been president, a Hispanic listen, would listen, take care of his listen, race. All listen, coaches listen, would take care of their okay, race. Uh, listen, uh, Taj, all you're doing is getting emotional. But listen, 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 every all our great leaders got assassinated, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Obama had to play it smart. But we read th those who were supporting him read between the lines. Let's talk about education. Let's talk about all the great things he did, the healthcare, all the great things he did that really benefited us because we didn't, we had healthcare problems, uh, healthcare struggles. But see, the Affordable Care Act went through, but oh, but what's his name? Trump ain't still come up with a plan. The wall still ain't built. Pence was over the task force for the uh, pandemic. Didn't do nothing. See, th see, see, Here's the problem I always have with Trump supporters. Once again, y'all find everything wrong with everybody else except the person in charge. Yeah, that's correct. And the thing is that he spent four years just overturning everything Obama did. Obama could not be a president just for the Black people. He had exactly. to be a president for the Everybody. American people. Right. And the he thing you must understand... Anything. You, what you must understand is what he was doing was for the purpose and the good of the nation that benefited Black people as well. Now, the thing you must understand, Taj, is that one of the most disturbing uh, laws that Trump overturned, just being contrary and being a bigot, was the fact that Obama put it was against the law for a mentally disturbed man to own a gun. He overturned that just out of spite. Now, please answer, Taj. Why would he overturn that? What is the what is what is he neglecting to a mental mentally disturbed person to allow them to now get a gun? <laughs> the Bible says, "Be not weary of things that are seen, what's it seen but unseen." Right? How many people that's mentally disturbed anyway? Right? Now you're talking about a law to say it on paper, but how many are off paper that's just normally mentally disturbed and got gun? My, my question to you, preacher, is that if it's documented that you are mentally <laughs> disturbed, mentally challenged, you are not able to reason or even be able to uh, function on your own, but yet he allowed you that as long as you um, have paperwork to show that, you can still purchase a gun. So if this same individual purchases a gun and does a mass killing, what kind of excuse, what kind of, what can you say to that when that could have been only avoided to say, sir, you cannot purchase a gun because you're mentally ill? What, what are they depriving them of? That's, Obama was a protecting the society as well as protecting someone who's mentally challenged. Why would um, your president you voted for allow that to happen? Like I had said before, <laughs> you're trying to get interested with with, with it. I just 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 clear cut, preacher. Just clear cut. That's all. I, I mean, I'm trying. I'm try, you say if it's documented versus how many that that it's, it's undocumented. How you know, about if you look statistically of the crimes that's committed, you probably wouldn't have documentations of those that it's mentally ill. I'm sorry. What are we talking about? Yeah, it was a question about <laughs> mentally ill or something like that. Something that was documented. Well, let me, said, Corey, let me, Corey, let me repeat this. Let me repeat no, this. I heard, now. I heard it. I heard it. You said that somebody mentally ill, the law that he reversed was somebody mentally ill can now get a gun versus cannot get a gun. I, I heard it. I heard it. But here's the reality. 
Mm-hmm. If somebody's mentally ill and they got a gun, I'm gonna tell you right now, that's a whole problem, player. That's a whole problem. But your boy Trump was like, it's okay, it's cool, because that's what's gonna happen. He's nine times out of ten gonna be black, nine times out of ten, cops gonna see him, nine times out of ten, he's gonna get shot and killed. Hey, resolve. That's I call it the Trump resolve. There it is. It may, it, but anyway, let me get that. And that's a very good point, Cor, uh, Corey. Mm-hmm. Now, let's hear your take on that, Cortez. Listen, I, the reason to re, well, it was personal, first of all, to reverse all of that. Secondly, it was, it is personal because once again, black people are not known to be mental. That's why they put us in church because we got Jesus, he's the mind related. White people are, are, have a history of being mental. So, so, so think about all the mass shootings. Just think about it. The result was all of a sudden mental illness. <clears throat> Even though they pre-planned to go to a mall and shoot Hispanics because the Trump amped up their negativity. When, when dude got caught and many of them all of a sudden they're mental. See, that's the only reason why I did it because he opened up the floodgate for all this. All them little boys who was Nazis, KKK, going to shooting up churches. They was considered mental ill, having mental illness, but they were pre-planned murders. But it's easy to label mental illness on white people because they have a history of it. They won't acknowledge it. Donald Trump had the mental illness, but ain't nobody going to tell him. Mercy, mercy. But <laughs> let, let's, I got one more thing to say, and I'll ask you a question, then we'll go ahead and uh, close it on this point. But, um, um, and I hope you're listening, Preacher. Now, one thing that's very interesting, and you'll see it on your monitor as well, um, it has been found that Donald Trump's own mother told him, my son is an idiot. And the worst thing that can ever happen to the American people is if he ever became president. You can look at that on your screen. Now, if your own mother told you you're an idiot and, and, and best believe you're a doggone idiot and this man became president of the United States, I don't know if there's much more to say about that. It's not a distant cousin that said it was his own mom. But the point is that um, you better be careful who you vote for and, you, and, and try and stay on the side of what's right. I'm not saying that people who voted for Trump is wrong, but it's best to um, not vote out of emotion, out of a spite. Um, and always try to look for the betterment of the situation that's going to be able to elevate the world and elevate the country because we become a laughing stock of the world. Now, um, Corey, for you, you being a comedian, you're very busy in all the things you got going on. Talk about a little bit as we switch gears to what you have upcoming and a strange request that you're requesting on a dating scene. Tell us a little bit about it. Okay, first and foremost, I need you to understand there ain't nothing going on because in the midst of a pandemic, my job is still talking about I'm going to see you tomorrow. That's the first thing. <laughs> Second thing is, as of this past Saturday, my truck has just dropped its, uh, what do you call the <coughs> draft, my uh, ge- gear shift or whatever, the big pole that's underneath the truck that turns, that thing Trans- fell off on me. On, get, Trans- man, the thing fell out on me. It fell out on me. So we on, were like, please uh, stop. Let's end things on a positive I'm, I'm, I'm serious. No, it fell out on me. There, I took the austerity. I was in Bolingbrook. I was 25 miles away from my house. So uh, we're going to do a fundraiser to see if we can get Corey uh, truck fixed. Um, but back to what you was talking about, Sherrod, um, I, I'm, I'm divorced and I'm single. And I realized that the, these young girls out here, don't they can't do nothing for me, bro. They can't do nothing but just me. But uh, I can introduce them to my son. So I decided to go on a new pilgrimage. My pilgrimage is simply I'm looking for a woman with a handicap sticker. That's right. I'm trying to find a woman that I can come home and say, baby, I need your teeth on this thing of mine. No. <laughs> I'm trying to go to bed by 730 every night. That's right. I'm trying to park in the front, bro. I'm trying to park in the front. So, so we got to get Corey that um, so he can find someone with a handicap stick on their vehicle. You can, uh, Corey, how can they be able to uh, reach out to you if they do fit that description? Uh, please follow me on Corey E. Bailey on Facebook. I'm also reachable at CoreyEBailey.com. No, Corey E. Bailey at Gmail. Corey E. Bailey at Hotmail. My, all of my information is on my Facebook page. And hey, real talk, my Instagram page got hacked. And I was unable to go back to it. So I guess I'm doing something right. I'm almost famous enough where they have took over my Instagram page. So I ain't even on Instagram. (laughs) 
Well, 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 that's great, Corey. And the funny thing about I've known Corey for many years, he's a straight up gentleman and he is serious about what he's requesting. So if you're looking for that or if you fit the description, inbox him or just email us at the Sherrard Show. Right. Fix my truck first, though, because I can't go on a date with my truck. How am I going to get that? <laughs> I ain't like these young folks. Uber ain't no booty to me. What's wrong with you? Uber. I ain't Uber in the booty now. You know how I know? I used to drive Uber. I used to take the girl to the boy house. I was upset with that. I'm like, you okay with this? Yeah, Uber. I'm okay. All right. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and for you, Corey, uh, uh, Cortez, what, tell, tell us a little bit about some of the things you have going and upcoming. Oh, well, just the two films right now. Um, my my sister's cut we planning a shoot in chicago soon and uh getting that together and we're trying to get this christmas movie done in kenosha as well as uh getting ready to start talking about uh love miles away in the next couple of weeks or a month or so uh just still going around uh uh gratefully with the short film bobby which is on mental illness that's still in festivals and moving around uh just last week it won second place for the mental health mental health category at the urban filmmakers Film festival in Atlanta, so it's it's, it's still moving around and uh, just, just just trying to make stuff that's going to be presentable. I'm understanding a lot of these uh, networks are looking for some positive content now because the stuff that they've been showing the last couple of years just have gotten out of hand. Um, so that, just trying to get on some networks with that. But uh, I'm not a comedian, but I did some interest in this weekend. Uh, I, I assisted and officiated a, a, a funeral with one of my guys and bro they had a dj in the funeral bro wow 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 I walked in the funeral they was playing the isley brothers hey and that, last, is, and that, and that, is a, that is a that is a topic for another episode a different day <laughs> <laughs> really yeah. and what about you what about you preacher jones what do you have upcoming uh the truck uh, relief on <laughs> but just trying to take it easy like I had said before my nonprofit is moving I thank God um, for that um, actually we just got um, awarded the nine four great nonprofits for 2020 um, on that so it's a prestigious um, acknowledgement for great nonprofits um, so we'll be posting that um, and just getting ready to um, hopefully start planning some um, talent competitions coming up. I think what the Spirit's leading me to do some spoken word um, um, competitions with things that's related to, you know, something that's positive or putting God first or something to that effect. So um, just letting the Spirit lead, lead us and, um, you know, get some of these approvals coming under Joe Biden, hopefully, um, on that. Really? Today. Really? I don't like your tone. I don't like your tone. <laughs> you ain't have to say it like that. You could have said it under Joe Biden. You ain't yeah. have to say under <laughs> Joe Biden. Get your wicked playing. You know, yes, sir. But, um, yes, sir. You're right, Corey. You're right. You're right. First of all, I want to say thank you, gentlemen, for uh, offering your opinion on the Sherrard Show today. We, we respect everybody's opinion on the show, and we give you your platform to be able to speak and talk about how you feel. Um, we, these gentlemen are very dear friends of mine and they're doing big things. So definitely support what they're doing. The Sherrard Show will be uh, coming to a city near you. Once the COVID is over, we are going on a five city tour. You definitely um, want to log in and check us out on Comcast NBC as well as subscribe to the Sherrard Show. You see it right on your screen below. And then also we're on iHeartRadio. Um, so you definitely want to check us out on iHeartRadio. If you don't have time to watch it on television, you can always listen to it while you're on your Alexa device as well as on your iPhone or iPad. And uh, on our next episode of The Sherrod Show, we're going to have Mr. Mike Tyson stop by to talk about his fight coming up on November 28th with Mr. Roy Jones Jr. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What do you mean you're going to have Mike Tyson on that show? Why Why we ain't on the show with Mike Tyson? Why, <laughs> why, why, we, get, why we get Mike Tyson Jones and you're going to put... Okay, but, and, and last thing, Sherrod, I'm also... Uh, I'm, Speaking this into existence, I'm also you see what I got coming up. I'm gonna be in Cortez's uh the two movies he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna be in them too. Um, I just found out because oh, just... uh, but but Corey, uh, Cortez yeah. didn't tell you. No, I told him. But hey, I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm sick of this. The Bible says, "Speak those things that are not." <laughs> well, as don't they are. <laughs> oh, I'm no. gonna be in the movie, and I'm not gonna be an extra. I'm gonna have a speaking role. If ever you want. <laughs> If ever you want something to be live and up, you can always have Mr. Corey Bailey in it. As a matter of fact, I am the featured in the show, in the uh, movie. I'm the lead for that 
um, for the Love Miles Away. It's a great story that Cortez actually puts together for me, and it's amazing. We had to talk more about that on a different day, but Cortez- Wait, hold on, wait, wait, wait a minute. Are you for real? <laughs> that is correct. I thought you was being prophetic, but you sound, Cortez actually nodded his head. Wait a, almost cussed. Hey man, is this, Cortez, is this true? Yeah, it's gonna be shot in LA. <laughs> I Cortez. got you, Corey, I'm gonna text you. Because after this phone, after this little thing we get on, boy, you, I'm boy. It's, it's, it's very, it's very personal. It's very personal to me, this story, um, because I am, um, it's interesting because I am um, unfortunately suffering from a kidney disease. And um, this is something that is uh, all about the movie. Oh, you healed in Jesus' name. Go on somewhere with all that. But, Don't you yeah. Step <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, my kidney. You got two of them. He's so silly, but it's but it's it's a wonderful thing. I would love to see you in it, Corey, um, as well as well as Taj. Taj is one of the best actors I've seen in my life. He's <laughs> oh my God, that was he's good. A phenomenal <laughs> actor, and I want to just yeah, give him yeah, a phenomenal, too. phenomenal. He's, he's phenomenal, and Cortez is just a producer out there. He's a super producer. I think he's a White Sox fan, aren't you, Corey? <laughs> I just show up at the games. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, Sox. in the meantime, gentlemen, you be safe. I uh, look forward to the next episode of the Sherrard Show. And in the meantime, be a blessing to someone else and God can keep blessing you. Take care now. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.